Yes. Right? And we're also free to say their nonsense is nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm, um, I'm a student of history, not of science. I also lived in the U.S. and Florida uh, for about three years, and I also read a lot of George Lakoff. I don't know if you're familiar with Lakoff. Yes. Yes. Um, all of these things together have led me to believe, or at least hope, that the reason that we're seeing, especially in the last 20 years, these, these extreme examples of, of uh, radical fundamentalism, both in, in, in the U.S. and in uh, the U.S. today, is that there's an awareness, even if it's not conscious, that that way of life is actually dying. Um, oh, yes. And that we are, the rationality and, and uh, progressivism, et cetera, are, are actually winning. Yeah. And that this is the last gasp, and this is why it's so, they're, they're entrenching. And I'm wondering if, you, you're, you, came from a, you come from a totally different part of the States than I was living in. And I'm wondering if you get that sense at all. Uh, well, sort of. I mean, uh, a, fr a friend of mine, John Wilkins, has also made the same argument that a lot of creationism is, is a reaction to modernity, that the, what they're doing is, is responding to the rapid pace of change, the way, the way things are going towards more secularism, with a more radical reaction against that. And, and I can sort of see that. Um, to be honest, though, in, in the communities I've been in, uh, what I see more is complacency, complacency that there's, a, there's an acceptance that they are the dominant majority and that this is the way it is. And uh, it, it's, what, what I see is more outrage when you point out the fact that there are atheists living among them, that there, there are, for instance, gay people living in these communities, and uh, they, they then get horrified at that idea. Um, so, yeah, you, so maybe some of the leaders are feeling this, this way, that they, they've got to make a push back against the, the changing modern world. But I think most people, it's, it's not. It's, 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 being brought up in a tradition, being comfortable with a set of beliefs and not questioning them. So if, I'm just going to just add on this, if, if we push back as you're suggesting, yes. and, and more further, do you think it's possible that maybe we could make that side die faster? <laughs> if they are in fact dying? <laughs> yes, that, that's, that's an entirely a possibility. That, and that's kind of what I'm getting at, is that by making them aware that these different ideas exist, that they, we can shake them out of that complacency, and that they can, that, that you know, most of these people we're, we're not going to we're not going to convert most creationists. But what we can do is uh, maybe have some hope for creationist children that they'll be able to see a, a better way. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, first of all, I want to say that I agree with you that it is just a fracking cracker. Um, You're about to say but though. I can tell. No. <laughs> Quoting. Okay. Um, now. But is it possible? <laughs> I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> um, is it possible that some uh, cultural memes and norms uh, that originate in one particular social group or religious group or ethnic group uh, can transcend their own group to the point that it, to some degree, it no longer becomes a fracking cracker? To give you an example, I worked at a grocery store once. That's a soul crushing job. I don't believe in a soul, but my soul died a little bit that day. Um, summer. Um, now, so how can you reconcile the, the increasingly blurred lines between their reverence, our respect for them as human beings, and also what is patently a ridiculous belief? Because um, you were charged with being a bigot, but you were really responding to what was naked bigotry. Um, yeah, and bullying, right. Um, yeah, and th th there's another tricky path to tread here, and, and that is, for instance, that, that I try to be careful in explaining that, that I really think Catholicism is silly, and that there's a lot of ridiculous beliefs there, but uh, that this is not intending to disrespect Catholics as people, that we do not want to ever get into the position where we have dehumanized a set of people for their beliefs and feel that we can treat them uh, you know, as, as something disposable, as, as something we should get rid of. That what's really motivating our argument against religion is a respect for the human beings there that we want to liberate them from 
these kinds of, of soul-crushing beliefs and situations. Does that answer? Sure. Okay. I guess one more. Yep, I the last, which is kind of cool. Um, I just, I need to question this one point that you made, um, or that you were seeming to make, not with the people you chose specifically because they seem to be really foolish and ridiculous with what they're doing, but when you brought up those three people who managed to make it all the way through uh, and graduate with degrees from an educational institute, well, I need to ask that, or, or I need to question what you're seeming to imply about the educational institute, and that's that, it, well, it's to educate, not to indoctrinate. They don't need yes. to come out not creationists on the other side. They just need to know more. For example, you can study world religions. You can study religions from all over. That doesn't mean you need to convert to those religions. Correct. So I think that it's, in a sense, it's all right for people to still be creationists on the other side, so long as they have learned. And if you're standing up and saying, oh, well, this is the information that you've taught me, then they're not lying, they're just yes. presenting what you've taught them, and they, if they can do it, then it's not a lie. Oh. But what they're lying about after the fact, that's ridiculous and horrible, but actually right. just getting a degree, I don't think that's necessarily quite as bad. As yes, and that, that was kind of point I made earlier, that we don't want, we don't want loyalty oaths, we don't want these, these kinds of prerequisites that you have to believe in X, that belief is not a part of the scientific idea that we have anyway. Uh, and, and you're completely right. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm advocating is, is that what we should have is a broader education that, uh, that this, this would not preclude creationists from getting through graduate programs. But what it would mean is that as they went through these graduate programs, they would have to get exposed to the broader ideas of science. They'd have to have a better feel for evolution, scientific method, that, that, that they ought to have a, a much greater breadth of knowledge to actually count as a doctor of philosophy and biology. Um, that, that of course runs into all kinds of practical problems and that graduate students are, are the slave labor of the lab and that, that would interfere with getting work done. But in, in principle, that would be a, a, an ideal to aim for. But um, in an undergraduate degree, for example, don't, in most science, or at least for me anyway, oh. you have to get a good grounding in the basics before you move on to doing graduate work. Yes, so. that would be great if all graduate or undergraduate programs were that good. If they were as good as the University of Minnesota Morris. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, but a lot, you know, I'm at, I'm at the University of Toronto. This is this is bad policy to say this, but you know, big universities, it's it's really easy for students to fall between the cracks, uh, to go through the motions and, and get their degree without much comprehension and without much monitoring. Uh, so it's always going to be a problem. There, there, there is no simple solution, and, and, and I'm definitely not advocating that one solution is to put a barrier so that creationists cannot get through degree programs. It's that we put up standards so that when they get through the degree programs, they're better educated. Um, you know, if, if for instance, if you read Jonathan Wells' books like The Icons of Evolution or so forth, uh, what you discover is a guy who's got this poor grasp of scholarship and who is gleefully mangling the literature. Um, it would be good if he'd had a little bit better education than that. Well, again, you can't preclude malevolence, though, and that, that, I kind of feel like that's the case of Jonathan Wells, but you see what I'm getting at. There, there's no easy cure. There will never be an easy cure. Thank you very much, yeah. and it was an excellent lecture. Thanks. We're going for drinks. Yeah. <laughs> I, I heard the word O'Grady's, right? Is that everyone? Okay, O'Grady's. Okay, that's where I'm going. <laughs>